Good afternoon. I'm Patty Johnson, coordinator of the Southeastern Council of Foundations Engagement Initiative. This afternoon, we're delighted to present our program, Aspire Arkansas, a statewide indicators report sponsored by the Arkansas Community Foundation and presented by David Johnson, Vice President of Community Investments at the Arkansas Community Foundation. David joined the Community Foundation in early 2010 as Vice President for Community Investment. In that role, he oversees the Community Foundation's grant making and community leadership efforts, including publication of Aspire Arkansas, the statewide indicators report that he will discuss today. David is trained as an attorney and practiced law for 12 years. In addition to his work at the Community Foundation, David serves as state senator for a, central, for a Senate district in central Arkansas that includes a large portion of Little Rock. So at this time, I'm going to turn the program over to David, and uh, he's going to tell us about Aspire Arkansas. Thank you, David. Thank you, Patty. I'm glad to be here and glad to be talking about Aspire Arkansas, which has been a big uh, project for Arkansas Community Foundation. I'll begin today with a little history of Arkansas Community Foundation to put this project in context, and then I'll talk about the indicators project itself, and then I'll give a brief glimpse of things to come with Aspire Arkansas in the future. So Arkansas Community Foundation began in 1976 with a grant from the Winthrop Rockefeller Foundation uh, which was new back then itself. The governor, Rockefeller, in Arkansas had just passed away in the early 1970s, and his estate formed the Winthrop Rockefeller Foundation. One of their first grants was to, Arkansas community, was to help fund or form Arkansas Community Foundation. So we were located just a little bitty statewide community foundation uh, in Little Rock. That was our only office for about 10 years. And then uh, to try to achieve the statewide mission that we had, we um, were contacted really by people in Texarkana wanting to set up an office in in, uh, in Texarkana, t in Arkansas. And that was our very first affiliate office in 1986. So we had the Little Rock office and the Texarkana office. And then since 1986, we have grown really by leaps and bounds, especially over the last 15 years, and today have 27 offices around the state in addition to the Little Rock office, which is our central headquarters. And each one of those offices is staffed by a part-time staff person. Each one of those offices has a uh, advisory board made up of local uh, community members. And each one of those boards also has discretion over about thirty, forty-five thousand, thirty to forty-five thousand dollars every year that they grant out to local uh, nonprofits and government projects. And it was really that discretionary function that those advisory boards have that really prompted us to begin exploring an indicators project. It's the same thing that some other community foundations have done around the country, and we thought it would be a perfect fit given the, um, the number of people around our state that are involved in the community foundation, as well as the many donors we have who have set up funds. I, I consider myself well informed about our state and try to keep on top of things in our state, but when we started looking at this data, even I was surprised at some of the things that I would see, both good and bad, about our state and about the county in which I live in central Arkansas. And I thought to myself, if I'm surprised, I bet other people involved in our organization will be surprised too. And, uh, and so we wanted to provide an indicator support to our donors and to all of our 27 offices around the state to help them be more informed about their community and then hopefully, therefore, make more strategic decisions with their grant making. And so in May 2011, we published Aspire Arkansas. This is the cover of it. It was a paper report. If you take that paper report and open up the uh, report to the center layout, you get a sample of what we have in that report, and this is that center layout. Um, these are public health indicators such as adult obesity, overweight students, admitted drug usage among young people, and then the prevalence of smoking. That's just four indicators of about 40 that we have in that report. And those indicators involve a number of different uh, subject matters. And this is the, you might say, table of contents or the 
uh, types of data that we have in the report. We have uh, what we call Aspire Education, that chapter which measures achievements in K-12 through education, including high school graduation rates and literacy testing and uh, the standardized testing that students take. Aspire Workforce is number two. That measures the, um, the degree attainment in each of the counties in the state and as the percentage, for example, of uh, high school graduates and college graduates and uh, people with uh, master's degrees or other professional de degrees, that kind of thing. Aspire Families measures family economics. Aspire Health is that public health data we talked about. Aspire Economics is more family and state economic data. Aspire Security is crime data. And then number seven, Aspire Participation uh, looks at some indicators to try to measure community engagement by the people in the community. So this page uh, slide shows a sample beginning of this is Aspire Families, sample opening of, the, of a chapter, gives some narrative about it, and then goes into the indicators such as teen pregnancy and children in single family in single parent families, and then other data too, uh, including poverty rates. So these maps and these, this data that we have sometimes use terms that people may not know exactly what they mean right off the bat. And so in the back of the book we have uh, some definitions so that people can put things into context. And then on the website we have a number of, uh, a lot of supplemental material. And so you, if you go to the website, this is our home page, you click on that Aspire Arkansas report, a uh, red link right there, and that takes you over to the Aspire Arkansas page we have. Uh, toward the bottom, that right-hand tab is the full report. You can click on that and and uh, and get that. The next tab over is the is county reports. We have all of the data consolidated for each county into a two-page report, so that you don't have to flip through the entire uh, 60 pages or so of that paper report. You can just click on your county and pull up a quick two-page report, and it gives you a snapshot of all of the indicators for the entire uh, report. Pretty handy. Uh, and this is a sample uh, county report for Pulaski County, which is the county in central Arkansas where Little Rock is located. And then the next tab over is historical data by subject, which is really handy if you want to track uh, an indicator over time. And I'll give you an example of that. This is the um, obesity um, indicator. And for each county, each of the 75 counties in the state, it gives you two points in time and gives you a ranking for that, uh, for that county among the 75. So we partnered with the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. It, the U.S. Census Bureau in Washington has a state office, a state data office, census office, in each of the 50 states. And Little Rock, at UALR, University of Arkansas at Little Rock, that's where Arkansas's state data center is located for uh, the Census Bureau. They're not so much in charge of collecting data, but they are in charge of publishing that data uh, for people in Arkansas who want to access it and use it, that kind of thing. And so uh, they not only do that kind of work for the Census Bureau, but they also uh, partner with nonprofits, state agencies, and things to publish reports. And so they already had some history of doing this. And, um, and we partnered with them to do this, and we thought on these maps they did a fantastic job. This is an example of what, what's so revealing about these maps. This map that's up right now is the map, uh, the da data map for birth, births to teens, ages 11, 17 by county. This is 2009 numbers. So each of these numbers shows uh, the number of uh, pregnancies or the number of births per 1,000 females between the, in that age range, uh, 11 to 17. And so the lighter the county is, the better the number is, the darker the county is. Uh, the worst that the number is. And if you see this, right along the uh, eastern border of the state, that's where the Mississippi River is. That's the Arkansas Delta. Those are some of the counties with some of the very uh, worst numbers on this indicator. But if you look at the county right there in the middle along the uh, eastern border, that's Lee County. And it's, it's in light pink as opposed to surrounding counties. And it turns out that it has one of the very best numbers in the entire state. Uh, Lee County has plenty of social challenges, there's no doubt about that, 
But when you look at this map, you see that Lee County is, is uh, one of the leaders in the state on this indicator. And it caused us to look at this a little bit more. And it turns out there's a very proactive messaging program there in Lee County that tries to reach out to uh, teenage women and young adult women about the consequences of pregnancy and how to avoid being pregnant, that type of thing. That's obviously had a positive effect over there in Lee County. And the thing that's so great about this map is that I know that if I were just looking at a list, a uh, typewritten list, black and white, of all the counties in the state, I would probably look at the county in which I live and maybe a few others, but I would not see Lee County. But this map shows Lee County, and it's because of the good job that the University of Arkansas Little Rock did shading these different counties and really pointing out the good and the bad. And this next uh, slide is some of the uh, historical data for this indicator. You can see Lee County, uh, the number in 2009, 8.7 per 1,000 females, one of the best in the state. 2004 was the previous point in time that we measured. Not quite as good, but still a pretty good number. Those, those are the indicators and types of indicators we have in the report. So as I mentioned, the, the real reason that we're doing this report is to try to get our grant makers, our, our offices around the state and their advisory boards, as well as our donors around the state to be more informed about their community so they can be more strategic about their grant making. And th I have a slide up that I think uh, of some people and a project in particular that demonstrates the kind of impact that we're trying to have with this report. Uh, this is a this is in Monroe County, which is also in the Delta, a farming uh, community there in the Delta. Not a very large population, but this is this slide is taken in uh, the local pharmacy in um, a small town in Monroe County, Clarendon. And uh, the three people on the left are um, community foundation members there of our local office there in Monroe County. And they are standing with a gentleman named Al Slager. Al is the CEO and director of the medical provider there in Monroe County called Mid-Delta Health Systems. And they're all standing together because they joined together to uh, open up a 340B federal discount uh, drug program there in Monroe County to serve the people of Monroe County and to pro provide uh, low-income working people there in the, in the community with uh, discount uh, prescription drugs. And so what happened, the way this whole thing came together is back in uh, early or late 2006, the Monroe County Community Foundation, our office over there, said, we need to do a needs assessment here in Monroe County to figure out uh, what our strengths are in Monroe County, what our challenges are, and to see what we can do in the future. And so they hired a consultant from um, outside from central Arkansas, uh, nearby Little Rock, and that consultant worked on that needs assessment, put it together, and then they had a, a meeting of the community, really, in spring 2007. And the community gathered and uh, wanted to hear the report, and the report came back with fairly predictable um, insights, said that uh, there were strengths of the, of, the, um, of the community, had a prosperous farming economy there, but had so many challenges. And one of the challenges, of course, was that uh, many people in the community were low-income people, had, uh, just could not afford uh, health care services, and in particular couldn't afford, afford prescription uh, drug expenses. And so they were making choices between buying prescription drugs and putting food on the table and paying utility bills. And the Community Foundation said if we can just take care of one of those things, in particular helping them put prescription drugs on the table, they, they're going to be more dependable about getting their prescription drugs and they can be healthier as a result and more productive perhaps at their, at their work. And so they contacted Al Slager, who happened to be exploring at the same time this federal prescription drug discount program. And so they worked together. The Community Foundation put up um, some money to uh, help start this program to provide startup funds to uh, purchase the initial stock of her inventory of prescription drugs. And then that stock becomes self-replenishing uh, over time because people pay small uh, co-payments for these prescription drugs, and the co-payments plus the discount that the program gets from the federal discount drug program uh, continues to keep the, uh, the, the prescription drugs in stock. And so that's what happened. In, in October 2007, the prescription drug program uh, opened its doors and started serving the public, and it's still going strong to this day, still serving members of Monroe County. So we sometimes we, we uh, encourage our 
donors and others, if they're interested in looking at the program, to use logic models. And uh, we put this logic model together here to kind of track what had happened. Uh, Monroe County Community Foundation had this great idea, contacted Mid-Delta Health Systems and said, could we partner with you? And Mid-Delta Health Systems agreed. Monroe Com uh, County Community Foundation chipped in $13,000 and gave that to Mid-Delta Health Systems, who leased the space for the uh, pharmaceutical pantry, stocked the pharmaceutical pantry with the uh, inventory, uh, developed the sliding scale for the program, and uh, marketed that service to people who would need it. And the uh, output from that, the direct output was it, that uh, this program, which they called the Pharmaceutical Pantry, opened its doors. Outcome from that was citizens got more affordable prescriptions, and the impact, of course, citizens were healthier, and their lives were more sustainable as a result. I showed this in linear fashion, but, of course, when you're putting um, logic models together, oftentimes you, you, you go in, in backwards fashion. You, you start at the beginning, and you say, Monroe County Community Foundation has this great idea, and they say they want their citizens to be healthier and their lives to be more sustainable. And they say, how do we do that? One thing we could do is get uh, more affordable prescriptions for, for them, for the people in the community. How do we do that? No one on that advisory board knew anything about pharmacies or knew how to do anything about this 340B prescription drug program. So they said, how do we do that? And they said, well, we have to open this pharmaceutical pantry. And to do that, we got to contact and partner with somebody who can do it. And that's how they reached out to Mid-Delta Health Systems, chipped in the, match, the uh, money to uh, begin the program, and then Mid-Delta Health Systems leased the space, stocked the pharmaceutical pantry, developed that sliding scale, and uh, marketed that service to people who would need it. That's how the program uh, got going. We think it was a real great example of community leadership and really trying to uh, provide a benefit, a focused benefit to people in the community. And like I said, it's still going strong and hope it's something that um, our other uh, people in the Arkansas Community Foundation, they've taken great interest in it and think it's a real model also. So that's, that's what we're hoping to do with Aspire Arkansas. And the good news is, is that this project, Aspire Arkansas, has been so well received across the state that we have, over the past two years, come up with ideas about how to improve on it. And coming this September 2013, we're going to be having what we're calling informally Aspire Arkansas 2.0 showing you a little, uh, just a few kind of snapshots of what's to come. Um, this is going to be, we hope, the, the front cover of it. And, um, and inside it, we're going to have some more narrative, but also some questions and answers from professionals and experts in the field. This gentleman pictured over on the right is Joe Thompson. He's the Arkansas Surgeon General. That's an official position set up by state law. And he provides some Q&A on some health, ask, on some health uh, uh, issues. And then we go into uh, the indicators. And we have uh, the same kind of data maps that we had before, but we're also going to have more well-developed historical data. We're also going to have uh, state rankings on this thing. So we'll see what we'll, pages will be, will be full, not only of the maps and the historical data, but also we'll show how the 50 states line up on many of these indicators. And we'll show where Arkansas is and show where all the states in the, that are represented by foundations in the southeast Council on Founda Foundations, and every state in the, in the union. So I think that'll be interesting. We'll include racial disparity data to show the difference on these indicators between uh, different races, as well as gender disparity, so that people can see uh, the differences between uh, male and female. And we, I was looking at one this morning, as a matter of fact, and it showed that there is a, a real difference in poverty between males and females, that the female poverty rate is about a quarter, 25 percent higher than it is for males in our state. So that, and then we're also, because we want people to be able to respond to this data, uh, we're also going to be including what we're calling the poverty index, which uh, has involved uh, some pretty complicated math beyond me, but uh, some ac ac uh, professors and others over at the University of Arkansas at Little Rock spent some time with uh, regression analysis and, um, and uh, developed, uh, put that through an analysis all these indicators and ran them against the poverty rate and really w were able to, to determine what the drivers in our state are of poverty. And so we're going to have that kind of information in the report too and hopefully people can respond to that as well. So that's what we're going to be coming out with later this year and we're pretty uh, excited about it and hoping very much for the best. So that's Aspire Arkansas. 
Patty, I would be happy to take any <laughs> questions that uh, anybody has about the project and where we're going from here and what our experience has been so far. Okay. Well, I know Tina just joined us. Hi, Patty. Sorry Hi. for the late entry. Uh, well, we're at the Q&A part. <laughs> Good timing. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. But uh, we've had a very interesting discussion here with uh, um, with David Johnson from the uh, Arkansas Community Foundation, and they are in the process of doing their second indicators report. And uh, we also have online uh, Erica Kirby from the um, Blue Cross Blue Shield Foundation in South Carolina. Erica, the other person that has joined us is Tina Marcanda from the uh, Duke Endowment. Hi, Erica. How are you? Good, Tina. Um, Tina and I have met once or twice before. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're amongst friends. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. So. Do you have questions? Uh, actually, I do have some questions, David. Okay. This is, um, very helpful and, and very interesting. Um, so I'm going to kind of go back and um, ask, when you were doing the, the data polls, um, did you use any of the information or to what degree did other organizations doing similar um, kind of profiling factor into how you came up with these statewide county, um, county by county estimates, like specifically for the hospitals, the nonprofit hospitals that have the new um, IRS requirement to do a community needs assessment? Um, or another example is, and I'm not sure if all states are like this, but the United Ways in our states are fairly active in terms of doing local community strategic planning. So did you see that your Aspire kind of drove their efforts or were they complementary or were they done in tandem together? Well, we were so focused when we when we began putting this, this report together, we were so focused primarily on data that reflected data per county for each of Arkansas's 75 counties. And that was the case primarily because of these 27 offices, affiliates that we have around the state. Most of those offices are single county offices, such as the I mentioned the Monroe County Community Foundation. And there are a few that, that are multi-county, but most of them are single county. And so we wanted those advisory boards to be able to see their county and data for their county. And so when we begin putting data together, I think all of the data, except some of the uh, K through 12 testing data, which was done by school district, and had to be reported by school district, but otherwise all the data was was county data. And so we relied primarily for that on um, data from the Census Bureau and then data from the various uh, executive departments of state government, such as the Department of Health, the Department of Human Services and the Department of Education as well as the Department of Higher Education. Those were probably the top four from which we, we, um, we, we had data. And those are really those two main uh, sources, the Census Bureau and then the, um, those state agencies, were really the primary sources of, of data. And we, we did not go to other agencies. And we, of course, we weren't gathering any data ourselves. Uh, this was all secondary data from those sources and collected by that Census Bureau office at the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. And so they, in this partnership we had with them, they were primarily the ones who um, were compiling all this data. We were selecting some of the indicators that we used, but um, that, that, those were kind of the parameters that we were using. Okay, well, again, just to compliment, I mean, I think that they are um, very easy to read and just it, it's nice to see consistency across the counties. I think that's I actually used to um, work for our State Department of Health, and um, I think one of the challenges has been is that different counties are at different places, and whenever they do reports, they look differently. Um, and so I think that, that um, that's one of the things that I just really wanted to compliment you on because it, it captures concisely um, a fairly robust um, set of information. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And I'll, I'll bring that um one of those early slides back up so that 
Tina can see that too. But uh. um, a, another question that I had. Um, so this, when you were talking about the pharmacy pantry, yes. Um, was your goal to really work with your local chapters, and I may not get your terminology correct, um, affiliated with the Arkansas Community Foundation, or um, are you seeing that other local foundations are coming to the table to work more collaboratively together? Yes, in fact, I'm, that's a great question. We, we, and, and that's, you're exactly right about that. We, we did this primarily to help our 27 offices around the state and their uh, advisory com uh, boards that each one of those has. And if you put them all together, that's about 500 people across the state. And as I mentioned, each one of those boards has discretion over about um, 25, 40, maybe some have about $50,000 in annual uh, um, money that they can give out on, on a discretionary grant making process. Uh, and so we wanted them to be able to be as impactful as they could with that, and we thought they could use this information. And I think that they've, that they've done that. There's, it's been hit or miss. Some have, have embraced it more than others. But the big surprise to us was how much other foundations in particular and other players in the state em embraced this report and how interested they were in it. And uh, we really felt that it uh, increased our profile among uh, that community, statewide community, um, as much as anything, and, and we so that's really been, I think, the, kind of the unex, unexpected benefit that we experience from this. And as a matter of fact, that we've been as we've been putting together this next edition of it, uh, which we're say we're calling Inspire Arkansas 2.0. Um, there's been a working group that is that has contributed some of these ideas that I was talking about, and 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 we we didn't have that so much in the past. We were primarily working with the University of Arkansas Little Rock in the past, but but we we really benefited by this uh, kind of collaborative with other foundations and uh, to really try to maximize the uh, what we can do with it. So that's been the big surprise, really pleasant surprise for us. Great, thank you. You bet. Um, Okay, since I, um, Tina and I are kind of a small audience, I won't be shy about asking questions. And sure. So I have one question and, and one comment. Um, the slide that you have up, David, for the teen pregnancy, um, I am fairly new to the teen pregnancy discussion. My history is more in chronic disease and um, prevention. But one of the things I thought I would just um, kind of pass on as what our state has found is that the older teens, the 18 and 19 year olds, are um, actually have a higher rate of pregnancy rates than the 15 to kind of instead of looking at a range of 15 to 19, when you break that down from like 15 to 17 and then 18 to 19, it's the 18 to 19 year olds in our state at least that have a higher pregnancy rate. So I just offer that as something that you may want to look at at some point. Um, that may be in your full deck of, of data slides, but I just wanted to kind of put that out there. That is interesting. We didn't know that. And this, this data, as, as I think it says it down here, comes from the Department of Health. I think that's how they gather it. But it may be, too, that they have a ability to segregate that data into two different um, age groups, too. So um, I, I was not aware of the distinction, and uh, it makes sense, and I'm glad you pointed that out. Did we just lose her? We may have. Yeah. I don't see her phone number up anymore. And I don't I either. I see her as a as a participant on the webinar, but not on the audio part. Yeah, she's here for the visual. I still see her. She Patty, I'm, I'm sorry. Who who, are, who do you think we might have lost? Erica. Oh goodness! All right. Well, I heard the little blip. So yeah, and uh, the 803 is that right? That's the Carolina? Columbia area code. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Tina, I hate you missed. We will. We have recorded this though, and well, I will make sure. And David, I apologize. Um, my meeting that was supposed to be over at three o'clock um, 
ended up running over. So please forgive me for having oh. having oh. missed your presentation. No, no problem at all. I appreciate you being part of it. And I Eric is back. <laughs> oh, okay, hey, Eric. <laughs> I got disconnected, so I had to, you know, go through the whole process again. My <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and in that short while, I forgot my question. So if I think about it, I will <laughs> um, right. bring it back right. to the table. <laughs> okay. And, and Patty, we are still on for um, another conference call next month. Is that yes? Is that mm -hmm. the one? Okay. Yes, it's yours next month. I know. That's why mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure. Okay. Yeah, and uh, you'll be getting an email from me by Friday saying when can we set up a uh, a, a rehearsal time. Okay, and, and Patty, you may want to check. I think we already scheduled that for June tenth, so you oh, may want to. Oh, we may that. have. Yeah, I think I think we tried to be proactive. And David, you please feel free to call in thirty minutes late for that one. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, we do have it for one p.m. on yes. June tenth. Mm -hmm. Great. Yes, okay. yes, yes. So we are ready to go. I will be. I'll start advertising it and so forth. So yeah. Yeah, and uh, but we do appreciate it. Anybody else got any more? Have you thought of any other questions, Erica? No, I don't believe so at this point, David. Thank you so much for sharing this. This was um, um, I'm kind of recent into my position, so it was um, wonderful just to see how your foundation is trying to kind of bridge and provide some consistency across the various efforts. Um, in your counties. Oh, absolutely. Well, Eric, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate, you. I appreciate both, both of you, Eric and Tina, uh, joining me. And, and uh, we, we're just so fired up about this um, project. And so I just, I'm, I'm happy always to share with anybody who has an interest. And I've got my, if, if anybody, if either of you or Patty, if you have a question in the future about it, right. feel free to call me or to email me. That's my email address right there. And I'd be happy to visit about it. Wonderful. Thank you, David. Okay. Yes, thank you. It was very informative, and uh, um, I feel like I know something about indicator reports now. Um, and we'll have this recording up on YouTube at the SECF channel in about a week, and I'll send you all the direct link. And there will be a brief you know, survey at the end of the uh, when we log off. Uh, the Tina mentioned the program for uh, June. It's the Alzheimer's Epidemic, a Community Response to Care, and is presented by Margaret Noel, uh, doctor, uh, founder and director emerita of uh, Memory Care, and Tina, who's program officer at the Duke Endowment. Uh, and the webinar is going to focus on issues surrounding care for the rapidly growing number of families impacted by Alzheimer's disease and other types of dementia, which affect close to half of the population over 85. It's something I have been living with with my family uh, for uh, the last year and a half. And uh, so I'm looking forward to hearing about this. And so thank you all for being with us today, and I hope you'll join us next month for that presentation. Great. Thank you so Thanks much, Patty. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Please stand by.